This is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you, am I the only one who saw this? Welcome in. We are live here on this Wednesday afternoon and a big show planned for you centered around really one topic. I'll get to it here in just a moment, but the Braves continue their winning streak last night. We've got a lot to get to. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On ATL. Of course, I'm at Mark Zinno, M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Give us a thumbs up and a like and share all the great content we have here on Locked On ATL. All right, um, let's start with Deshaun Watson today. And, you know, we, we talked earlier in the week about morality in sports, right? And Phil Mickelson and, and all that and be careful about where you put it because you'll be allowing a whole lot of other things um, to, to make yourself look like a hypocrite. And this sort of dovetails in on that. And this is off the heels of a New York Times report. That says that Deshaun Watson saw at least 66 massage therapists over a 17-month period. Um, the list of 66 includes 24 women who have filed lawsuits, uh, two in the past week, a woman who sued Watson but withdrew the complaint, two women who filed criminal, criminal complaints, 15 therapists who issued statement of support for Watson, four therapists who were contracted by the Texans, five women identified by the plaintiff's lawyers during the investigation of the civil suits, and at least 15 other women whose appointments with Watson were confirmed through interviews and records reviewed by the New York Times. Okay. I'll say this again in case it, it needs repeating. Folks, you know, if the number of women that are coming out and accusing Deshaun Watson has finally started to get to you, it's finally started to make you go, whoa, yeah, uh, he probably shouldn't be playing football this year. Then you were thinking about this thing wrong to begin with. Because guess what, folks? This is how this sort of works. And, and particularly when it comes with the violence against women. One time, you may be able to argue is bad judgment. One time is bad judgment. One time you can go have a, a mistake and just get caught up in the heat of the moment and, and everything else. The minute it hit woman number two, it was intentional. Don't kid yourself. Don't fool yourself. When he called the second massage therapist, when he asked for sexual favors from the second massage therapist, it became intentional. By the time we get three, we were at full-blown pattern. Don't kid yourself into anything here. And I am not saying by any stretch of the imagination that Deshaun Watson is 100% guilty of all this stuff. What I am saying here is that objectively, Deshaun Watson on a spectrum of things, is at the very best, at the very, very best, the creepiest dude in America who you want nowhere within 100 miles of any female you've ever met. That's the best case scenario for what Deshaun Watson is. At worst, he is a serial sexual predator who needs to be behind bars for a very long time. Now, you could argue the truth is somewhere in between. I'm not even going to have that discussion. Because... The reason he's not facing charges right now has nothing to do with whether he's guilty or not. Folks, do your research. Go back to the depositions. He has agreed. He has, he has, he has confirmed meeting with these women. He has confirmed sexual contact with some of these women. This is not new. Like, it's not hard to figure out. And the difference between criminal and not criminal, is somewhere in a piece of paper written down how the rule reads. In parlance, NFL fans, you would understand the old catch rule. What we thought looked like a catch, what we saw as a catch, written down rule-wise, wasn't a catch. And it's the same thing here. You know, I just watched, and I'll give you another example. I just watched a documentary on Netflix called Our Father. Really, really creepy. Um, and it was about a fertility doctor who was inseminating women with his own sample instead of the ones of their fathers. So he was taking the wrong sample and purposely putting his in women, and he fathered like some 90 some on children, if, if not more than that. And the only thing they were able to legally, legally charge him with 
was obstruction of justice when he lied to FBI agents when they questioned him. The way the law was written, there was nothing that said he actually committed a crime. And that's what the real deal here is with Deshaun Watson. The way the law is written, investigators must have felt and the DA must have felt that we cannot win this case. And trying them all and losing is a waste of time, resources, money. And oh, by the way, it makes all these women look like liars. So let's not go down that road. Because legally, the way the law was written for whatever reason, and I don't know all the legalese of it and everything else, but that has to be the reason. Because in reality, guys, you can't have this many people asserting something without at least one of it being 100% actually factually, factually true. So, again, the fact that he's not charged, don't give me this innocent until proven guilty. He's admitted to sexual contact with these women. He's admitted to it. So I don't need to know that the fine line between what is and what isn't. As I said, at best, he's the creepiest dude in America. I want him nowhere near anybody I know. Man, woman, child, dog, who cares? I don't want him anywhere near anybody I know. I'm running in the other direction because he's a creepy dude at best. But don't kid yourself into thinking that any of this at this point should be surprising. It, it's it's not, none of this should have changed your thinking. And and here's the other part. The NFL now, they, it's almost like they got the life raft they were asking for. This actually saves the NFL. This makes it so much easier on the NFL. They were hoping something like this was going to happen. Why were they hoping like something like this was going to happen? I'll explain why. Because the NFL, who openly says they care about women and care about optics and everything else, and they really don't. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. If you think they do, you, you're completely mistaken. The NFL does not give a rip about appearances. They do not. They try to put on a good spin and a good face on everything, but they don't care. They clearly don't care. And there's not an NFL team that cares. They act like they do, but they don't. So don't kid yourself. That said, the NFL was dealing with the dilemma of how do I suspend a guy who clearly has done some really bad, uncomfortable things with not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, with 20 plus women, okay? How do I suspend that guy when not a single charge has been brought against him? Because all I got is the comparison of Ben Roethlisberger, who was never charged for six games, Ezekiel Elliott, who was never charged for six games. So really all I can do is give this guy six games, maybe eight based off of the volume of women, right? Because they the, the pushback from all the other players in the league and the players union who is part of this whole thing says, you just suspended a guy who wasn't charged with a crime. How do you do that? Right? So there's this, this back and forth infighting. There's this back and forth thing. And they were close to the end of this. Well, now, Oh, wait a minute. I've got more information. I've got, in fact, I've got, got 42 more pieces of information that I didn't have before. And all this is bad. And guess what? Now, now, because the number has gotten so big, because it's gotten so huge, now I can actually suspend him and everyone's going to back us up. Because all the sports media folks in Atlanta and everywhere else are going, oh my God, I can't believe this is so bad at 66 with the sheer volume of this thing. Folks, the sheer volume at two was a problem. Get your head out of your ass. Like one is the problem. You want to you you want to get excited? You didn't get excited about twenty, but now you're getting excited about sixty. I got to question where you are. And sports media folks in this town, you guys crack me up. And I'm sorry. Like I I don't. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one with an active brain. And I know my colleagues and, and they're all my friends, and they're all going to tell me I'm an idiot. And that's fine. And and they, they get where I'm coming from. I think they know this is not personal. But I've heard some really bad arguments over the past twenty four hours, man. I've heard some awful arguments about this whole Deshaun Watson thing and where it is. You know, like, again, people who were screaming at, at yesterday, the other day, at Phil Mickelson for doing this, but yet, oh, Deshaun Watson can go play football. What's the big deal? He wasn't charged. You know how ridiculous you sound? Do you know how stupid you sound on the surface? Like, honestly. Like, admit that what you're doing is making a terrible argument. And we go, well, I'm not defending Deshaun Watson. I'm not defending him. Then what are you doing? 
oh, I'm just pointing out, you know, the, the, the mere fact. Okay, yeah, you can wordsmith this thing all you want. It, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter at all. But sometimes I feel like I'm the only person in this town uh, from a sports radio perspective who has like any objectivity towards this stuff and, and looks at it with any sort of clairvoyancy. Sorry for the arrogance, folks. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I just, I've listened to talk radio in the sound and I don't know wh what people are getting at. And this goes beyond suspension and everything else. Like, if you are objective enough to say, I don't want this dude around my daughter, I don't want this dude around my sister, then leave it there. It doesn't need to go any farther. If you can objectively say that, then guess what? The consequences should come after that. The punishment should come after that. If, if you can meet in the middle, if I can ask any one of the sports media folks in this town, would you want that guy alone in a room with your wife? Would you want that guy alone in a room with your sister or your daughter? If the answer is no, then guess what? You believe he should be suspended. It's that simple. It really is. Don't complicate the issue. I just, I'm not sure why people can't figure this part out because it's blatantly obvious. Now, the real question is, is what will the NFL do and how will they handle it? I think they got a gift with these extra women. They got a huge gift. Now they can delay this. They can drag it out a little bit longer. They can come up with a punishment and all of a sudden it's there. And I'm sure the Cleveland Browns will will figure out a way. I mean, he's going to get suspended, so he's not actually going to get paid. You know, the bonus money he's get he's got. Um, you know, they may try contract voids. The NFL doesn't have enough nuts. They just don't have enough balls to kick somebody out of the league. They just don't. Like it's it's not who they are. They're gutless and spineless in that matter. I give baseball at least a ton of credit. They drew a line in the sense that Pete Rose, get out, don't ever come back. Like at least they have the guts to do that. Right, wrong, or indifferent. At least they have the guts to do it. Football doesn't have the guts for that. The NFL doesn't have the stomach for that. Because if they did, they would have done it a long time ago to certain dudes. Because there are just certain dudes who didn't need to be playing, period. Now that's it. When we come back. <laughs> it's only going to get better, folks. Uh, if you're a Falcons fan and you wanted Deshaun Watson here, should you feel wrong about it? But first... We'll put somebody else's head on the chopping block. That's coming up next. It's A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube. Everybody get your podcast. Search Locked On Sports Atlanta.